Hi again then guys and welcome to my full thoughts and breakdown in an overarching sense of the GT Sport 1.45 update, which of course has the four vehicles as we already knew, but the speculation came in as far as if there would be a circuit or circuits coming alongside them. So if you haven't seen already, spoiler alert, Spa is not in this update. Are we really surprised at this point? I'm not really. But we do have Tokyo, or rather the rain variations of Tokyo, four in particular, and you can also even drive at night in the rain if that's your thing. So that's cool for those who are into it. You can see some rain driving or more so wet track driving really in this video in the new Camaro. Now, speaking of that new Camaro and of course the other three vehicles as well, as I always do with these overarching reviews of an update, I don't go super in depth with any of the cars because they will all be getting their individual reviews in the coming days on the channel as well as some tune setups as well. So my brief thoughts on each of the cars are, first of all, the Camaro, the ZL1 1LE edition. This is probably the standout of the pack in terms of significance because it's relatively new, it's a high level muscle car and it's a car which could potentially have a lot of use. So what does it turn out like? How much does it cost? Well this car is actually very cheap. It's just under 80 grand which for a muscle car is great. Obviously that's a lot more than the existing Camaro in the game is, the newer shape, but still that's pretty great value. You cannot use it for money earning for stuff like Blue Moon Bay. I don't think it would be a particularly good car for that anyway because the lowest you can get it to is N600 if I recall correctly. However, on the subject of power, you can actually make this literally in the top 10 most powerful cars in the game. It has over a thousand horsepower fully tuned, I think it's like a thousand and seven if I recall correctly. And as you can see from the footage of me driving it, even on the not so great straight of Tokyo with a very basic gearbox tune where I haven't even adjusted the individual gears, I've just extended the overall auto settings. Even with that, it's doing over 230 miles an hour. So it's pretty quick as far as muscle cars go. It's powerful. It is heavy and it is big, of course, but it's pretty light on its feet and it's a lot of fun to drive. I'm definitely looking forward to getting into this one more in its review. Next up, another muscle car. This one for me is the standout from the pack in terms of how fun it is, because of course, many of you know I love muscle cars, especially classics. And in particular, I love big muscle cars. I'm not so much of a like Camaro guy. I prefer big stuff like the 70 Charger, even stuff that's technically not muscle that precedes that, like the 62 Lincoln Continental and the 59 DeVille. This one is just the kind of muscle car that I love. Long trunk, long bonnet, great handling, but at the same time handling that's great by my definition. <laughs> so it's not going to outhandle something like a, a European exotic, but it's so much fun. And one of my favourite things to do with these is exactly what I did in the video which is tune it up to like 700 horsepower, drop the weight, and make everything on the suspension as soft as it can go. And just look at this thing going through corners. It lifts its wheels all the time to the point where actually it flips over pretty easily, but it's so much fun. It's a real challenge to drive on sports tires as well, but this is easily my favorite car of the pack in terms of its handling and how fun it is to drive. Again, I'm definitely looking forward to doing a tune on this one, even if it doesn't turn out to be that great a car. It's a lot of fun. And I'm glad that they gave muscle cars some love in this pack because it's been quite some time if I recall before or since even we've had our last muscle car. Next up though, staying in America, we have by far the most expensive car of the pack. And incidentally, the whole four vehicles together cost a combined 6.16 million credits which is quite a lot for four cars, but five million credits of that is just this car alone. So a massive jump in price compared to the previous game, where it was about half a million, now it's a full five million credits. However, I will say that doesn't bother me too much because even though I think one million would be more than enough for this thing, I kind of get why they put it up. It is a bit more iconic. Uh, it's certainly an iconic Corvette, at the same time though, I think 5 million is about right, in a similar way to how the Chaparral 2D used to be like 3.7 million, because it doesn't have the same level of fame as some of the other cars, but at the same time it's iconic enough 
to definitely deserve a price rise. So I'm, I'm not annoyed with that one. 10 million would have been pushing it. 20 million would have been definitely far too much. So I'm pretty happy with five. Unfortunately though, it is in Group X. So you cannot put it up against the Plymouth XNR gear under most circumstances, which is a shame because I've always considered that to be its best rival in Gran Turismo. However, we will of course be reviewing it, potentially doing a tune for it as well. But again, be aware that if you buy it, you'll need a lot of mileage points to upgrade this thing. I'm talking thousands upon thousands of mileage points, just like all of the other 20 million credit cars. But overall, it's an interesting car. If you've never driven it in Gran Turismo before and you're wondering about buying it, it's basically like what would happen if you put wheels on a UFO like a flying saucer. That's what it feels like to drive this car. And last but definitely not least, of course, we have the only non-American car. The car that kind of sticks out like a sore thumb <laughs> as far as this pack goes, the Ferrari, the 365 GTB. If I recall correctly, I think this one has also had a price hike. I don't recall how much it was in the last game. It might have been similar to the Stingray actually, but it's a million credits, which ain't too bad. And although my thoughts will definitely be put out there more in, again, this car's individual review, the two things that I will say about this car for the moment are, for some strange reason, we cannot adjust the ride height, which is curious, I'm not really sure why they did that, but also of all of the Ferraris in the Gran Turismo series, Spoiler alert, hot take, this is my least favourite. In fact, my least liked in general. I've never been a fan of the 365, I'm not really a fan of the Daytona version either, but that is coming from someone who has a Ferrari as his dream car. So I'm not a Ferrari hater by any means, I'm just not a fan of this one. I find it kind of dull, which I know is weird to say, but that's just the way it is for me. So a couple of expensive cars, a couple of very affordable ones with 80 grand for the Coronet, 80 grand for the Camaro, and a whole lot of power. This is a powerful four cars and a pretty expensive four cars as well. As far as the wet weather goes, you know what to expect. It's Tokyo, but with rain. So, of course. <laughs> and ultimately, there are a couple of new photo mode locations, which is interesting because it's not just a new location. It's actually existing locations, but with beads of water on the car, which is interesting, once again, for the artists among us, those who are budding photographers, it's cool to have that for sure. It's not going to wow everyone, but it's some of those nice smaller details that they do get right. It tends to be the broader strokes that I have more issues with, but overall, that's it for my thoughts on this pack. As I said, be sure to stick around on the channel for at least the coming days, because I will be reviewing and tuning all four of the cars. Doubtless you'll see more of the action on Tokyo in the rain as well. And that's it for my thoughts, so of course, I'll see you guys next time, and for now, as always, thanks for watching.